Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast, season three, episode two. There's a slight change in the lineup today. Me and Sam, as regulars, are here, of course. Ped is getting his hair cut. Dave Vitti is popping up at football grounds, maybe close to you. Uh, he is working away doing stuff at footy stadiums this week, apparently. But we have got our very own Carl Pilkinson in with me and Sam today. So I am delighted to say, Ned, welcome back. You've been on this sporadically, but you're here today. You've been off on holiday and I can't wait to hear all about those holidays. But how are you? Good. Good. I mean, I give you the big build up and you give me a... You didn't even give me a Neil Mopai kind of comeback there. You know, you just sort of went, mm, yeah, good. Leave him. Leave him. Leave. He's done now. Well, Neil Mopai... Leave him. Forget Neil about Mopai him. is like... Uh, Forget is about him. him. He's gone. And I don't want to think about it. Before again. we talk, before we get on to it though, obviously Fabrizio Romano's done what Fabrizio Romano does and broke the news before anyone that Mopai's off to Marseille and it's all done. And Neil Mopai simply came back with a tweet of him. Looks like Shawshank Redemption of him getting out of prison, ripping his shirt off into Neil Mopai shithousery fashion. So I've got a lot of time for that. I haven't got a lot of time for him as a footballer. I, 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 I haven't do forever because he's a millionaire. And so what? he's done nothing to be a millionaire. I, I don't think any no, I don't think any football player should be a millionaire. Listen, Carl. The, amount, the amount of money he's earned from sitting on our bench and winding us up. And now not only is he, is he left with loads of money and done nothing, he's given me an headache and I'm i I'm sick of it. I'm sick of headaches. <laughs> okay. I'm sick of him. Okay. Fair play. So I hope, he, I, hope level, he, I hope he bombs level, at Marseille. Fair that play. level of shit out of is to be applauded, I think. But I, Sam, have, I'm with you. We never saw it on the pitch, did we? No, no, never. No, he was, he never. was completely, completely useless, and yeah. never because a shit house in your team. I don't think Everton have had enough shit houses over the last five years, and like, no, correct. you know, surrounding the referee, trying mm -hmm. to make the game, you know, little decisions going your way, winding mm -hmm. the opposition up. We don't have that. No, and 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 he was it, but he never did it on the pitch. So good no. riddance is what. Off I you go. I, I'm gonna get a train to Marseille station and wait for him and tell him. <laughs> yeah, that's already up, I think. I think you've lost the audio. Um, you dig, I think it all went wrong when you called him Neil early on in his Everton career. Instead of just going with the, the what everyone else knows him as is Neil, you went with Neil, and I think he heard it and he couldn't recover from it. But that's enough of that. That is enough of that. Sam, just very briefly, we spoke about how difficult it was going to be going to Tottenham last week. It kind of proved it, didn't it? What a, what was your take on that defeat at the weekend before we get on to happier, happier Doncaster reviews? Yeah, well, it was kind of expected, wasn't it? But mm. And I'm not going to go into the Do Doncaster game just yeah. yet, but just mm. it's interesting how the last result of your team really affects your mood because I mm. feel a lot more optimistic, albeit having just beaten the mighty Doncaster Rovers of League Two. But yeah. the Tottenham game... I. I sort of expected it to be a defeat, but the, the manner of the defeat was was really bad, especially because yeah. we shipped three goals in the first game and to ship yeah. four. And it, it just, oh, it was just really, really, you know, just demoralizing really. And it's just all those same feelings came back to me that I'd sort of compartmentalized as an Evertonian, which was not just, oh, we're losing. Oh, we're getting beat. Oh, we're not playing very well. Oh, this team are well better than us. Oh, this team are well quicker than us. This team seems to have a plan. We don't know what we're doing. It was the, the feelings of dread and existential fear that I've spoke about so much, which yeah. is game two of the season. And I'm already going, we're in trouble here. We are in massive trouble because that Bournemouth game is huge. Mm. We've completely balls it up in the first two games. Mm. And I just don't know where we go from here. So, I mean, it just puts so much pressure on, on the Bournemouth game. That said, the win against Doncaster was a much needed shot in the arm, wasn't it? Yeah, I think for me, I, I was just... It was the man of the defeat. I, th I thought, top, without being neg too negative, I expected us to lose at Spurs just because, for the, all the reasons you've just said, there's no sort of clear, concise game plan and there's no pace and we, we use the same sort of system and things like that. The best you're hoping for is Spurs have an off day and you can dig in and get a draw. And I want those feelings to, to go because Tottenham aren't Man City. They're not elite, as in you can't get near them. Um, but when they so, went 2 0 up, that's mm -hmm. when we started to get into the game a little bit. But that was only because Tottenham were 2 0 up and thought, we don't have to press, we don't have to yeah, push, yeah, we can yeah. just let them have the ball because they know. And and teams know now we can't do anything with the ball. 
Mm. We don't like having the ball. So when we've got no. the ball, we just we, it's aimless and it's like diagonal passes and Pickford's leathering up the pitch and it's yeah. it's just not. Wish he would have leathered it up anywhere. the pitch from one of the goals. Well, that's it. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but then when the, when the set, when the other two goals came in, I mean, yeah. that's just it, it could have been anything at that mm. point, couldn't it? They were just on yeah. fire. But the the I was because we can't watch three pm Saturday kickoffs in this mm. country mm. in normal means. So I was trying to access the game via other means. Let's just yeah. leave it there. Yeah. And I couldn't find it anywhere. And it got to 20 past, and I'm thinking, I still can't find it, but I'm still trying to find it. And it's like, what kind of person tries to find something? We were, two, we were already we were already 2 nil down. <laughs> like, what ca- exactly? And I'm desperate, and I'm annoyed that I can't find this thing that's ultimately going to make me very unhappy. It's a, it's weird. It's like some kind of Greek mythology. <laughs> Yarn, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, Ned, have you got anything to add to that Spurs defeat? Um... I just think we showed them far too much respect. I think there's the old saying, isn't it, lads? It's Tottenham. I don't know where Everton, but I think there's a reason why Tottenham, after starting so well last season, didn't finish um, in the top four. And they can be the successors of their own downfall at times, especially in in big moments. And I think, um, but I think if you want to, for- you got to force those mistakes. And when watching that game on on Saturday, I, th- I think we just. I think the team decided that they were never going to win that game mm. for themselves. And, and and if they got at them, you never know what can happen. Um, quite defeatist, in in my opinion. But mm. then watching the team as well, I just think... I was thinking they look so unfit, but I don't think it's that. I think we've got so much slow players. And I don't mean pace. I mean, mm. like, like McNeil, he's so left-footed, he needs four or five touches to just sort his feet out. Mm. Um, it takes them far too long to get close to each other so they can start playing a bit of football um and you can't be a slow team in the premier league you just mm. can't and i think that's our biggest problem there's not enough there's not enough athleticism there's not enough players that are good at, like fast enough on the ball good, good enough for football to uh get something going because it, it, it seems to be the same problem for the last two or three years but you had new players so it's not the same players like you said the other day but it's the same problems that we don't sign players with pace, so you're gonna have the same issue. We've got um, no outball essentially, no. have we? We, we, you know, Jack Harrison's the outball, but he's so left, he's left footed as we want it all on his left foot, and he plays him on the right hand side. He, he, he has to, to, he come, has to come too deep to get it, yeah. and, and he's not got the pace to knock it 50, 60 yards or run onto it. You've got to get someone around him and, and do a little give and go or something, but you don't get players close to him. If you're going to use Cavett Lewin as an outball. It's great if you do it right, but if you knock a ball up to him, not only has he got to win the ball, he's mm. got to bring it down mm. and then hold it up for two or three seconds, which mm. is a long time in football if you're if you're on the counter attack. And if you got if you say we had a minter, if we went and got mm. him, you, you, well, we, you, we almost you, he's, he's got the pace and need to get in behind him and, and and burst past players. Where Harrison and McNeil, they, they they want it they want it deeper, don't they? And I don't I know why McNeil, because they aren't think... fast enough. McNeil looks comfortable, more comfortable inside, and Harrison would be better on the left wing because that's where BLC used them. But that was being said, I just thought we looked beaten at kickoff. Yeah, I don't think mm-hmm. there was any belief they could get a result. But that being said, we we had Doncaster at home on Tuesday night in the Carabao Cup. Um, I think this one, Sam, the obviously the manager made changes, and it's, you know. Yeah, he brought in and die and Jai, as he calls himself. Well, that's probably he calls himself his name. We say it wrong, so <laughs> apologies. Illiman and Jai, uh, and obviously Jesper Linson came in to side Jake O'Brien. They, you know, Jake O'Brien his debut. Um, I thought the first half we made Doncaster look like the Premier League team. The way they passed the ball Confidence around, we were issues, still wasn't it? Bit, bit of panic. I, I felt. It was a bit, and you can understand that if you lost the first two games and you got a home game against someone you should beat you don't get that early goal maybe but sitting in the ground they just knocked it right it made it made me laugh when people say everton can't play football these players just can't pass it round. and i'm going these are a league two team where not one of their players were getting everton's under 21 side let alone premier league team and yet they're passing it round and moving and we're still looking for jordan pickford to smash it long to beto and when everton did get it down ironically in the second half they, they won the game comfortably, but you know, we, we you know the second half put it this way. Sam was much better than the first, wasn't it? Yeah, the second half was quite enjoyable. Mm. I I always enjoy these like early rounds, like league cup games, because yeah. you often play a, a lower league team 
and it's it's kind of enjoyable to watch um because mm. you, you you tend to win you know we yeah. tend to go out sort of round four normally mm. yeah over the last sort of few years but these games can't because it you see players that you're not that aren't getting picked for the league games you know mm. there was quite a it was nice to see Jake O'Brien play mm. um and I thought he did all right I mean, done all right I yeah think there was much to do but he, he no. seemed all right but it's just good mm. for him to get minutes and yeah yeah you know because we're all crying out for the manager to play some of these new signings I thought in in Jai I thought mm. looks really good yeah. you've got to take it all in a pinch of salt because you are playing I've, I've been referring to them as the mighty Doncaster Rovers but mm. they're not they're not they're no great shakes are they but we mm. you know, the second half we look pretty you know, we, we look like the Premier League team in the second mm. half. And I think mm. there, there was a little bit of, from what Njai was doing, it was just the positive runs he was making, which yeah. I think we've been crying out for. So, obviously, it's a it's a question whether he can replicate that against further Premier League teams. But mm. it's, it's got to be, you've got to take it as a positive sign that you've got a player just trying to get forward to the goal because you make the point about passing. And any team should be able to pass. Passes are the thing that happen more than anything else in a football match. Yeah. More than tackles, more than goals, more than mm. shots. Passes. So whether mm. you you don't have to want to play like Man City to no. understand the value and the merit of being able to pass a football. Mm. I think last season on this podcast, Ped made the analogy that sometimes the the, the game that Everton play almost looks like a different sport yeah. to what the the top teams play. Yeah, definitely. because it's such it's so disjointed and slow and. If you were like a, an alien watching Man City and then you watched Everton, you'd think, is this like a slightly different code of, of football? Is this like Union and... You don't have to be an alien, something? Sam. You don't well, have to be an alien. Where's the you alien just come from? Fun. <laughs> is, is the alien on Earth or is it on its own planet? We'll come back to aliens in a minute. but <laughs> Well, like, it could be anywhere. But you know, you'd, it's funny you say that, right? Because on Saturday, I watched Brighton and Man United. I then watched a little bit of Plymouth and QPR because that was still going on and they had nine men. New and East team wanted to see what... They, and they were still trying to win the game at nine men, which was blew my mind. Um, and then I watched Everton, Tottenham. And then while I was editing the aftermath stuff, I had Arsenal and Aston Villa on. And guess which one looked like a different sport? <laughs> the other <laughs> games, teams were passing it round and flying forward. And in our game, one team was doing that and the other team was playing. And I think you said it before. And it's right. It isn't all. It isn't all about. And I think Sam just said that the passing happens more than anything else in the game. But it isn't always about running either. It isn't always about having. Everton could have seven lads who could do 100 meters in under 10 seconds. Doesn't mean they're going to be a better football mm. team than what they are now. It's mind. It's passing. Thought. Quickness decision, of thought. Like you decisions. said before, decision making is quicker in on these top teams. It's triangles. When Everton did this against Doncaster in the second half, they couldn't get near Everton. And that was the difference. And the, the movement was the biggest difference for me because you're getting players constantly available for spread. I think I, against Tottenham, a player would get a ball and he's looking up and, and there's nothing on because players can't get close to him. But he can. It's it's how it the form it's how mm. the form the team, isn't it? I I still think this team and I'm sure the manager and the coaches are stood there looking at them as well, going, you lads, you should, you should do it in training, you know what I mean? So what is it then? Why can't he do it across the white line? But I thought, just to just to go back to Doncaster, because we've done spares, you're right, Sam, it, second half was much better, and it wasn't Jai's running towards the goal. But obviously, Ned, you could see once, it had been, and I'm not having it brushed off McNeil's it legs. It goal. It had been, I mean, it's if, it's given, a defender. It's being given it's to Dwight McNeil, goal. right? So it's his goal. But we here in the studio, we're giving it to Irabunum. Uh, but that was a good bit of positive play by Lindstrom. Running a plays in the box, cuts it back. A good striker goal. And once that went in there, everyone sort of calmed down. And Everton were able just to take the game away, weren't they? I think the, the, the best thing about that goal, and, and probably the rest of that second half, not only was it, it was a good response... When that ball comes out to Irabunum, Lindstrom's in the box, McNeil's in the box. Beto. Beto's in the box, thinking Jai's in the box, mm. four players in the box, mm. and uh, Irabunum on the edge. I even think Michalenko was high up on the edge as well there, that time. Well, I think, I think he made the run for Jai's goal mm. as well, and it's just being, being more positive and, mm. and movements are part of that and pass, being more direct and getting the ball forward faster. That Jai's mm. goal came from... A ball from a centre half. Mm. He stuck it on the half turn, mm. or took it and turned. Yeah, no, no, turned the lad. Yeah. Turned it, turned the lad, mm. and went straight at defenders. It's mm. direct, and mm. it is that quickness. He's not necessarily he's, he's got blistering pace. No, 
Just get the ball and get it forward but quickly. Like Sam said, he, I mean, he'd done this. At the, but there's I confidence know. that they knew they could do that, though. But the two well. lads who come on at Spurs did this, though. When we were 2 mm. 0 down at Tottenham and he brought Lindstrom and Jay on, Everton started getting into Tottenham's final third. It was just decision making. In fact, Lindstrom had our only shot on target at Spurs. The other night, they were running at the goal. It's mad, isn't it? You know, when you run towards that white thing. <laughs> all of a sudden, when, when you all, get players, all of a sudden, you, you score some goals, and that is the difference. And listen, each player has their own strengths and all that. But I think in Jai's positivity was was really good. And he took his goal brilliantly, and then the third goal was a lovely goal. And that was McNeil showing he's got a bit of vision. If you, I mean, if you look at the pass again, it's movement. You're right, Michalenko plays it and gets off. We have a little bit of possession, and it's back to McNeil. He slides it through, cut back, Beto taps it in. That positive, that positivity of attacking. Do you know one thing I've noticed about some players that have a lack of Premier League experience? Mm. When they come into the Premier League and straight away feel like they can play at that level, they get this sort of confidence. Ira Burnham, mm. Lindstrom, Harrison Armstrong, who's, who's started to play at a higher level, sort of mm. looks like he's got a bit of confidence. Mm. And they look good on a pitch. And it's I, I think it's because they get this lack, they've got a lack of Premier League experience because they're new to it. They're not terrified. They, yeah. they're not, they feel like, oh, I can play at this level, so they get this burst of confidence. Where players like McNeil have been constantly getting battered and been in a crap team for a few years now. He's like he's just the same player, isn't he? It's mm -hmm. not, he's not That's exactly exceeding expectations. Say what you like about Beto as well. He always turns up against Donny Rovers, doesn't he? Oh god, he's, yeah. he's just he's got them in his crosses, hasn't he? I was made up he scored because yeah. that missed the miss, that header. Yeah. Who's it who pinged the ball in? It was a great Jack. cross. And Jai's crop, on the run, was phenomenal. Really and it was just, it was, well. it was just begging to just be knocked in. I think mm. Don would have leathered that in the, in the back of the net. Yeah, but, he would have, yeah. um, it was a terrible miss. I know Hedden's on his strong point, so I was really mm. pleased with him to score because I still feel like, I, like with the transfer window still not yet to close. I was, I was like, I'm not that bothered if Beto leaves as long as we bring someone else in. Mm. But if he does stay, there's got to be more we can get from him because mm. he has got some attributes. He's mm. just, he just, he has got flaws as well, but he never stops working, does he? He never He's a handful, he... isn't oh, he? He's a yeah. handful. He's hor he must yeah. be horrible to play against. His arms yeah. and he's big and his elbow and he's quick. But he must, he must be quick. horrible to play with sometimes as well because he, <laughs> he doesn't do himself any favours at times. No. But I, I... we're all still behind him, aren't we, as fans? Oh, we're yeah, all still, I think yeah. he's got he's got the, you know, the support of everyone. He and got the biggest, well. he got the biggest cheer, I think, when he scored mm. the other night. No, I'm just saying the other lads didn't get because they did. But I, when he scored, he got a, he, the huge draw because I, I think, think everyone I'm, wants him to do well. Yeah, I think Abbott Lewin possibly being off helps with that as well a little bit. I think you, you play to his strengths. And I'll say this for any striker. We don't play to any striker's strengths. No. Well, Sky done a piece yesterday, didn't he, about how it's a thankless task playing for Everton up front. Yeah. And that, you know, and that's that's not great. It's not a great indictment for Sean Dyche. And it's not a great thing for, for the rest of the team. You know, well, it's not great for players who might want to sign. I for might want to sign strikers, yeah. You know, you sign. If, we, we all talk about them as money grabbing, you know, millionaires. Mm, but yeah, yeah. to be honest, a lot of them, the career focused in, in line with their agents, and they want to make mm. sure the next move is a good move it's for them. Ball, whether yeah. it's to, to score goals and play in a good team, or whether it's to make an impact and and then as a stepping stone for the next club. Which we, you know, we're all very honest as Everton fans uh, in twenty twenty four. The best we can hope for at this point is to be a stepping stone club. I know you've talked about it a lot, Baz, about mm. you know, like signing the next the, the next thing that we can sell on. Yeah, yeah. But definitely. Players aren't gonna wanna promise the strikers aren't gonna wanna play for Everton if they think well, that's just a dead end position and I'm gonna not get either the chances or the ball or the, the system's not gonna suit me. No, you're right. I, I think Beto is a, a simple it's a simple task. I think you've got a player who ain't great back to goal, but because of his pace and his power, I think defenders would be hate would, would hate chasing a ball, running towards their own goal against him. So you get you you get him making runs and you get the ball in early. Remember West Ham away, one of his only goals last season. James Garner looks up and got the ball in early, and he, he beats the defender every time to that ball. You you get the ball into his feet. He's got his back to goal and defenders behind him. He can be quite. Well, it's a lot more comfortable to defend against rather than running against him because he's big and powerful. He's going against Newcastle as well. Mm. But we don't seem to... And it's the same with Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin's a player that's good back to goal, holds the ball up, so you've got to get players near him or running past him. And we don't do neither for each player, so I think you've got to find a way to get goals at your strikers because whether it's how we set up or the players around them, I don't think we're quite getting enough around. You need players who can 
create for themselves. And they've seen the past few years, look at Richarlison in Jai, that we haven't seen a goal like that for a while. Players who create goals for themselves. Mm. Most of the time, it's just luck, isn't it? You know, second ball. That's not luck, but it'll be things. Well, you've got like winning the second ball, Mm. set pieces. That's not luck, is it? You don't really create a lot of quality chances, do you? Unless a player's done it himself, like in GI. Oh, you're right, you're right. But it was a good win, and obviously the draw was made. Everton have got Southampton at home in the next round, and when some of the teams were, you know, when I mean, what did you make of this, Sam? This new format, I, I know. There's excuses coming out. Oh well, they won't keep the European teams away from each other at the moment because it's that's the way it is. I I don't believe anyone in Europe should be allowed in the Carabao Cup. I really don't. I think you within Europe you cry arsing about playing too many games as it is. So you either I know the sponsors will want the, those clubs in it, but you either enter an under twenty one side, so you've still got them names in the in the cup. And therefore, you can piece it together for the game if you need to with a couple of overage players, or you don't go in it because starting to like sort of almost see teams, you you're oh. killing what is already a, a difficult sport now anyway. Football, you know, you still want that belief, and how much of a boost would it be for every other club in that competition if there was no Liverpool, mm. City, Chelsea, Arsenal, and just to back it up. Right, why I think it will be a shot in the arm for the competition. Um, just bear with me. I think it'll be a shot in the arm for the competition, right? Because listen to this: the last eleven winners of the Carabao Cup. So going backwards from last season: Liverpool, Manchester United, Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester City, Manchester City, Manchester City, Manchester United, Manchester City, <laughs> Chelsea. Manchester City. That's the last oh. eleven years has been shared between four teams, and City have won all clubs more than fifty percent of them. They're all in Europe. Uh, They're all too powerful. So seeding them and all that, Sam. I think it just makes a mockery of. It. I know it changes in the next round, but this one, it just made a mockery of it for me. Yeah, it's nonsense, and it's almost mm. meaningless to those teams that, that have all yeah. won the Carabao Cup, isn't it? It's maybe Man United because it's kept the manager out of trouble, but like mm. ultimately, the because even last year when Liverpool won the League Cup with the Carabao mm. Cup, yeah, and it was meant to be the first of the four trophies that they won, and we know mm. that ended, but yeah, that, it, they were all cheering, they were all pleased, but mm. I, I could tell it didn't mean that much. I know this means more apparently at Anfield, but yeah, apparently. I, don't, I don't because they've had such success. I mean, this is if anything a compliment to the club. That they've enjoyed so much success. A league cup win is is pretty much it's like way down, it's isn't it? Way down, yeah. It's, it's like us winning program of the year. It's like we'd well, be delighted with that at the moment. Wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, we used to win that every year. I we remember did. We in did my, in my school days, but you know things have changed. Um, but it's just another like another item in the long list of things that are wrong with modern football, and how mm. it's it just ever so slowly tilts like more in favour of the the teams at the top, and it's it's just. It's demoralising. I think Andy Burnham put a picture up on on Twitter of just, you know, he's worried where modern football is heading, and it's like it's it's already there in a way. Mm, but it was yeah. the it was the draw for the next round of the Carabao Cup because these teams, you're either in it or you're not. You don't mm. sort of half go in it. I know the FA Cup, we you know, top teams join round three, but that's been mm. that way, you know, for a long time, and that makes sense for that pyramid style mm. competition. But to sort of join and then be seeded, I just yeah. you know, but. I like your idea, Baz, about putting under twenty one teams in because that would be even for the bigger clubs, that would be great. Because if you you know, if you're like a Man City or you're an Arsenal and you've got your under twenty one team and they make it to round five, mm-hmm. you'd be really pleased with that. And then they lose against a, a first team, you know, mm-hmm. Premier League outfit, well, you'd be made up with that. Liverpool done this, didn't he, the other year in that uh, World Club thing? They played their under twenty one side mainly in it, and they got to Villa, I think, in like the quarters or the fourth round. Villa beat them five nil, but it was a kids it was a Liverpool kids team, but They'd already worked their way through. And I know it was a mix last season. And when he played at Wembley, Liverpool did have a, a younger side. Well, Chelsea's average age was actually younger, but Liverpool had a lot of players who were just playing in the Carabao Cup and they actually won it. But I just think it freshened the whole thing up, personally. But. I just don't understand why why any team should have any benefit, certainly the top clubs. Mm. Mm. Teams With in Europe get, 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 ho- get home draws against... Um, Clubs that are in, you know, the first and second rounds, which mm. are clearly mm. 
it's weird not there because they're not in Europe. I, I just don't understand why they've done it. What's no. the reason? For, there's, it, it is because of Europe, but I don't. It's it's. There's, they give nonsense. you all the excuses. Oh, in case they have to travel and they have to play separate. It's a lot because it's basically what it is. Sorry, it's because the your the Europa League and the Champions League are in a big league system now, so then games are getting played different times. Because it's a league, it's not groups anymore. Well, they've well, got they've got, they've got more the money to get more players. To, to, well, they've to got bigger feed, squads, so. yeah. So. And if you don't have a bigger squad, then you're not going to do very well in Europe, are you? I think it's I think it was rubbish, but hey ho. Anyway, let's move on from the full. See, Everton won, and that's good. Sam said before, to, well, a shot in the arm. We're ready for Bournemouth. Let's get get to Goodison at the weekend. Turn Bournemouth over, and then we get in. Ah. We get in the international break. Then feeling good. Oh, hopefully. It looks like Oriel Mangala's coming in later today for his medical, which is good. Another player in. Everton's still ongoing for Ernest Newmar. It would be a really good sign, and I think, because he's quick, we've got no pace. He would be a, an important one. Well, all eyes will be on what happens with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Everton won't let him leave unless they've got a replacement. As a Just don't call any of the new signings Neal. Ned, because no, and put that's the X on them. Yeah, we'll give you the names, the correct names. What if the names don't Neal? call them like Oreo Mangala? His name's what, what if the name's Neil? I, I just stay silent. I'm aware, yeah, just call him his surname and we'll be okay. Ned, you've had a couple of weeks off. Um, how was that? <sighs> well, it was long to be honest, but it was two weeks. I want to sit here and talk about the whole two weeks. You don't have to give me. Uh, well, it got it got. Did me... you do a diary while you were off? No, I, I did. Oh, a, okay. I did. I, I'll tell you what. I wrote a couple of poems about it. A couple of poems. Because then I was sat there bored. I thought I'll try something new. I've okay. Done, I've done music, wrote yeah. songs. I've done painting. You've done mu- like you've I've, completed I've mastered, it. I've mastered painting. You have know, mastered painting. I've, I've sold my own paintings. Okay. Um. So I thought I'll try poetry. Yeah. Um. You and what you're gonna? Am I? Well, gonna... I've got. I've got. I've got a poem, and then I've got a little. Two liner poem. If you okay. want to so read them out, so can, I'm reading the poem. Read them out. Okay. A ditty any, for Vitti. A ditty for Vitti. A ditty for Vitti. But it? sadly, it's not here. Okay, so this is your poem. The titles are at the top of each. Form. I can see it. Yeah, I thought that. You know, when I seen it in, I thought, you know, I'm sick of it. In inverted commas, was the title. Yeah. But hey, so this is Ned's poem. It's called "I'm Sick of It." Gardens, wind, rain, and sunshine, and this little dog of mine. Leaves are falling because of a bird in the tree. What do birds do? What do they do for me? If dinosaurs are so close to birds, why would they be made again by Mother Earth? Lots of jobs to do. It's driving me mad. Bit of silicone on my shoes. Now they look a bit bad. I was wanting son to have a barbecue. I wish so I'd watch some videos about men who cut fish. Now my holiday's over. Have to go back to work. That means I have to use my petrol. I'm sick of it. I, I I'm thanks, gonna clap thanks, that. Sam. I think that's it. Nice. It says a lot about you. I um, didn't really have much to do. You've 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 explained that obviously there was a bit of wind and rain, and so you've covered the elements of the weather while you were off. I like that. You've you've referenced the dog. I like that. You've told us that there was a bird in your tree and leaves were falling off. The. It, the dinosaurs are so close to birds. Why would they be made again by Mother Earth? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking because obviously we had dinosaurs. Yeah, who were uh, basically just big birds, aren't they? And and uh, whoa, and whoa, 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 whoa! A big bird. So it's Tyrannosaurus they're, 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 Rex is yeah, a big bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're is very, very similar, very skeletal. But then, like the, the Earth decided, <laughs> nah, we don't. Very need, what? The Earth decided, you know, the skeletorial. Skeletorial. You no know, similarities. You mean skeletal <laughs> system? Yeah, and then. And then the earth was like, oh, we don't really need these. So we, we got rid of them. Yeah. We don't need them now. What if we just wanted the little humans. versions of them? So we got humans that were well better. And then they went, you know, let's bring the dinosaurs back. And they added birds. But what do birds do? Just crap on you and stuff. I, think they, I don't think we need they're them. They're all get, part get, of get the ecosystem, aren't they, birds? No, 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 not really. Not get, really? Get, get rid of them as well. Oh, hang on, don't you like no, chicken? Um, I don't need it, do I? You do eat a lot yeah, of chicken. But if, if there was a dinosaur, we'd probably eat the dinosaur as well. But we don't. Well, need you are because you've just told us birds are dinosaurs. Well, yeah, we don't need dinosaurs, do we? Because they're not here, and we don't. We're fine. So okay. we get rid of the birds, get rid of the little ones. Okay, then you reference lots of jobs to do. Well, we we all do that. You were minding the house. There is jobs to do. Yeah. Ned. I have warned you about this. The fairy, who you know, washes your clothes and cleans your dishes, and that wasn't there because she was away with mm. your dad. Um, Ned's mum I'm talking about. Ned's dad isn't married to a fairy, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> bit of silicone on your shoe. 
that's reference to were you, were you repairing no, something? No, I, I had a hole, a big slice in one of my shoes. So, so you put silicone, silicone on it? Silicone, did it? <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> it's on top, though, so it's got a white line on one of my shoes. Why didn't you just get clear silicone? I just had some silicon in the house for this. Will, this is a this is a win win. This I get to use some of the silicon that needs using, and I get to fix a shoe. Okay, double win. I like yeah. it. Big W's. You watch some videos about men who cut fish. Okay. Yeah, it's just he had some big slices of tuna, and he was slicing it. I thought that's really satisfying. I'll, okay. I'll have a go with that. So uh, I sliced up some steak and made a steak sandwich. Not quite the same as fish, but I get it. I got to use a knife. And you. I happen to use your pets, which you don't like, and I know this for a fact. I was thinking, I'm, I, I was thinking, while well, I'm not going to work, I'm not really driving, so I'm saving money on petrol. So I use the money to buy uh, a new Everton top instead. Okay, fair play. Well, fair play. Sam, have you got anything to add to Ned's poem? I just, it brought me to tears. That, to be honest, mm. and I'm not mm. sure what emotion I'm feeling right now. I don't know yeah. whether it's positive, negative, or just completely bereft. But I okay. thought it, it covered all the bases that a good poem should. It was whimsical. Yeah. Mm. It was emotional. Yeah, there was there was practical advice in there with the silicone on the shoe, which you the don't wash. often get in modern poetry. You don't no. often get, a, a, and it's it's almost like watching a YouTube video while mm. I was listening to the rhymes. And it was also I thought that was a metaphor about the watching men cut fish. I thought there was some kind of I don't know, like it was like well, an analogy it, it, for something. It, but... it was more of a rhyme, you know. I, I wanted uh, the sun today for a barbecue. I wish. So instead, I watched a fit show about some fish. fish. And okay. fish. I like it. But I felt like it was kind of negative, you know, because of the bad weather and stuff. So I wrote a, I wrote a happy one straight Well, we've got it. a happy one, so shall I read that one? Oh, okay. If you, if you we've like got to. another one. So we've got two, another one. This is brilliant. I, you could be, a, you know, modern-day Keats or something. You know, you, you, I'm you trying to master it. poetry next. I've mastered everything else. Okay. Completed everything else. This next poem is called I Love It. Rather than this is a shorter one. <laughs> it's a happy this is one. Yeah. A happy one. So I like it. You've gone negative first and we're going positive to finish. I like it. Completing the circle. I Love It by Matthew Lamb, a.k.a. Ned. No work, no car used. Lack of petrol means my bank card isn't being abused. I love it. <laughs> That nothing sums you up better than when you're happy because you're not using petrol. We That's, went to Minnesota. That. We were in Minnesota a couple of years ago, Sam, and we'd had a, we'd gone to watch Everton and all that. We were over in America. We'd been to Washington and we were in Minnesota and we'd been to an event and we had a couple of drinks. And we were driving home, and someone asked Ned, American driving us home, asked Ned if he was enjoying his holiday. You know what he said? The best bit about this trip is that I'm not having to spend my petrol. <laughs> so we were in America, another continent. It, the weather was incredible. We were watching Everton. We were having a good time experiencing new things. And Ned's overall joy was not using petrol. Well, I had a lot of time to think during this holiday. You know, I was off for two weeks. So yeah. most of the time I was just thinking about how I'm not really using petrol. And then and did it make you feel good? So you, that was your poem. Yeah, and then, and then I watched this documentary about the earliest forms of human. You know, these, I don't know what they were called, but they weren't Sorry. using any They weren't using I'm... any petrol. You sure that was a documentary, not a mirror? No, 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 it, no, it, was, no it was definitely a, it was a documentary. They had, like, hair on the bodies and that. Um, hair on the bodies? They had, they had, they had, they had Again, a male who just had sex Wait, whenever he wanted, literally. <laughs> okay. Have you thought about getting an electric car? Because maybe that'd cure your problem. Well, no, because, just the, because then that's the just bus. another headache, isn't it, Sam? I have to use electric then, and that costs money as well. Well, Nothing's yeah, free the poems anymore. would be different. Nothing's free. Poems would be different. Everything was free would be when, when the earliest human... How come we've gone forward, but we've gone backwards? They had everything for free, mm. and now everything costs money. I'm sick of it. Everything I'm costs like money. We've gone forward, but we've gone backwards. We have yeah. gone backwards, and there's more that's war now. Poetic. They didn't have war. They just done what they did, did what they wanted. I mean, all right. He had massive they fights, though, didn't and he? They did have big fights. fights. Yeah. Well, we still have fights. Okay. Have you got anything? Have you got anything? You know, no else? more, no more poems. No more poetry, but I can't believe how much. The, uh, you know, I was watching the news every day. So much. I mean, that, that dolphin news. Yes. Have you got the dolphin news? The dolphin. There's news. so much animal news going round. Like maybe well, you know, you've got, done... I don't know because we got more zoos. So there's more animals being watched, so there's more news about animals. Mm. But I watch well, a lot of animals. Well, okay, here's the dolphin news that Ned is referring to. Okay. Lonely dolphin behind multiple attacks on humans in southern Japan. Oh, I read that. 18 people have been injured this summer in a seaside town in Japan by what is likely to be a solitary dolphin that has been separated from its pod. It's attacked 
50 humans in recent years. And it may be lashing out because it's lonely. Um, so the horny dolphin just attacking people? I don't know whether it's horny. Well, I mean, it might. I mean, who I knows? It is. Yep, yep, you did. The, the bikes appear to be is... playful because it's uh, <laughs> want to interact with humans rather than hurt them. Dolphins have like lots that, of... Though. You know, always, the witch. It always starts as a bit of a laugh, doesn't it, until someone gets well, hurt. Well, get him, it. Get him, this is why we have zoos. Get him some friends and put him in a, in a controlled environment with some friends. But I, yeah. I want to know, why, why is, is he lonely because of humans? Like, have humans caused this? Well, we don't know, do we? Because he's right. been separated from his pot. Right, well, then we've got to think, why is he? Why have the other dolphins... Dolphins are quite clever, you see. They're, they're more clever than humans. Mm -hmm. So why have the other dolphins abandoned him? He's obviously... If it's not the human's fault, then the dolphins have done it. So then you've got to think, he's a knobhead, isn't he? Or he's done something, you know. He's, he's, he <laughs> is he, he a knobhead, He could though? be a dolphin fiddler, for all you know. It, it, he could I mean, be a dolphin it, it, murderer. Whoa, yeah, whoa. He's done it, it something bad for these dolphins but, to separate him. But, Ned, do you so say the dolphins are more clever than humans? I'm not Is that? I'm not sure. That's been there. Uh, no, they, oh, no of, course they, of course they are, Sam. They're well more clever. They're clever than humans. In what way, they, though? They just don't have thumbs. Imagine if a dolphin well, had a... There'd be dolphins going around with guns and stuff if they, if they had thumbs. Okay. I know the dolphins, they, the, the little squeaks they make, the different pods have different accents, mm. and yeah. different like uh, vocab they use. That's mm. that's fascinating. Because that it all sounds fascinating. The Scouse dolphins. I think a lot of them sound Scouse, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got no... We've got... Yeah, of course. Yeah. We've got no uh, evidence that they are. Have you got any other animal news while you're on it, Ned? I mean, you've, you've brought animals to the party well, here, so... I've got I, I some think... animal news. But if, if I can jump oh, in while Ned's looking at that one. Sam, Sam, please share. Sure. Uh, is it in Florida? Is it alligators or crocodiles? Alligators. 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 Yeah. American alligators. An alligator, alligators. Yeah. I think it attacked a human and, and ate him, which happens right. quite regularly. Mm -hmm. And they did what they always do, where they, they go out looking for the exact alligator that, that you know, committed this it. crime. Yeah. But if I can just quote Chris Rock, that mm. alligator didn't go crazy. That alligator went alligator. That's what they do, isn't it? That's they what just, they do, yeah. The the design to attack and eat and be vicious carnivores. So mm. I don't think we should hold that against them. So th no? these these fellas that have gone out to find him, they're idiots. Because the fella that's gone and got eaten, he went too close to an alligator and got eaten, as you do, as you should expect. So why are more people going near alligators? Are they after being eaten as well? The alligator's Idiots. not turned up in Idiots. Walmart, has it? Pissed Shove them in room gone, right, 101. I'm having Idiots. you. Idiots. That's crazy. Sick if an alligator it. turned up, and I know, you know guns are legal in America, if an alligator turned up with a gun, that would be an alligator essentially going crazy, wouldn't it? Be doing oh. something they don't normally but do. I, I, but how's it got all of a gun? No, I'm saying, if it did, that would be going crazy. If it's running down yeah. the aisle, in, in, I'd suggest even... Legging it down the aisle in Walmart. Walmart's massive in America, obviously. That Huge happened. shops, right? That would be a bit mad because it's not. But if it knocked on someone's door and went, hello, hello, door. Uber Eats, and you open the door and there's an alley eats. Alley eats. Eat. Well, then it's just doing <laughs> his job, isn't it, Sam? I don't think anyone's going to go hunting for a crocodile. I don't know just doing, doing a shift on the delivery drivers. Well, mm. yeah, of course it is. If it's knocking on your door with an Uber Eats, then it's obviously got a shift, hasn't it? It might be black and it's an Uber Eats stuff. Well, the then, well then, it, then, then, then it's going to door to door. It's a door to door murder, isn't it? So mm. then I wouldn't, I wouldn't so blame anyone. So then people would have to go yeah, out and find it. If you go into their home and yeah. start giving it the big eye arm and it mm. eats you, if you can go into someone else's home in America and they can shoot you mm. for trespassing, yeah. why, 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 why is it all right? Why isn't all right if the alligator does it? That's a good point. I mean, yeah, essentially, what you're if you go into their gaff, then you know, the, the, should all. Should loads of alligators, you know, they're gonna come looking for the I'd, person who trespassed. Yeah, right? I'd give an alligator a gun if he's using it in his, his in his own environment. You know, environment, and that's fine. I don't know whether they could use a gun, but who you know? But we don't advocate guns being used by anybody, let alone alligators. No. That'd be a bit. Well, this bad. is the thing. This is the thing about the dolphins. Mm. If dolphins had thumbs, they probably would have shot that other dolphin by now, because he's quite clearly an. Or if they had phones. <laughs> he would be able to track where they are and go and join them. That's the problem. Well, if they you had don't phones... Need, you they... don't need to give them weapons. You could just give them guns. If they had, if they had phones... You could okay. just give them phones rather yeah. than guns. Well, they'd most likely have the dolphin police, wouldn't they, if they had phones? If dolphins Possibly. had phones, all dolphins would be just as lonely as that lonely dolphin because that's what phones do to you. They, they, they connect do. you, but they make you feel... Well, he'd, 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 jump, right. he'd, jump, on, he'd, he'd right. jump on Dinder, wouldn't he? Dolphin Tinder. Dinder. And probably make some new mates rather Dinder. than trying try on with humans. We're not, in, we're not into that, mate. Some people I are. Some but... might be. 
Nice know. blowhole. Have you got? Have you got? <laughs> We're Wait. talking of animal hate... news. Go on. If you you've know, got more. Like... I don't know if you remember monkey news, Sam, but monkey news has been gone for like 20 years now. I thought, oh, I found some monkey news. I thought I'd bring is it monkey back. monkey news a website? There, There is a monkey news website, but there, there's been a lack of monkey <laughs> I news. I think that just means in general there's a lack of monkey news. So, so we, I, you're bringing I, I, it back? I found some. Okay, cool. Yeah. How you call the internet, Ned? Monkey news. Monkey right, news. So is this, uh, it's the only thing I really use it for. Go um, on, then. Other things. Yeah. Well, there's, there's this band one once, right? Um, big band. Um, done really well. They had, they had quite a short stint in the limelight and mm-hmm. charts and everything. You know, they wrote this album. Album blows up. You know, they're in the charts. Yeah. Um, getting loads of big gigs. Um, are these monkeys that are getting big gigs? No, no, they're oh, just a band. Just a band. band. Yeah, okay, humans. sorry. Yeah, I can't on. remember who the, who the band is. Okay, come um, on. Then. Not the blue monkeys. I couldn't find Not the Arctic sure. monkeys, no? no? it's just a band. Okay. Um, so they get this uh, huge gig. Mm. I can't remember what it was, something like Glastonbury or something. It yeah. wasn't, wasn't Glastonbury, it was something like that. Yeah, okay. You know, really big gig. Big yeah. festival, yeah, come on. So this this is the big one. You mm. know, this is make or break. They're big now, but they get they do well in this, then they'll be, you know, legends forever. Um, <laughs> okay. Basically guaranteed that. Okay. So they practice for ages to prepare the best set ever. It's going really, really well. Right. Can't wait for it. Yeah. Loads of big advertisement. This band's going to be amazing. I'm promising everyone who's going, this band's going to be amazing. Yeah, all right. So, okay, the day of the festival, you yeah. know. It's all good. I'm all looking forward to it. Yeah. Drummer's fed up. He goes, I'm sick of this. You are getting all the limelight because you stand at the front of the stage. Mm. You know, you're advertising the band with posters of you and not me. I'm just at the back of it. I'm, fick- I'm fed up. I'm, si- I'm sick of it. Yeah. So he goes, I'm not doing it. I'm out. I'm not doing this festival. I'm sick of it. Okay. So he, he gets off. This doesn't feel like news. It's, this feels it's, like no, a story. It's, it's too late. It's too late to get another. Feels like a um, cheese dream. It's yeah. too late to get another festival. Okay. Says, You're getting a little credit, and I'm I'm sick of it. I'm yeah. off the band. I'm off. Yeah. Too late to get another drummer. Um. So oh, I can't do it. The drummer. Can't okay. do it without a drummer. They can't do it without a drummer. Right? Yeah. So they have to get another drummer. Anyway, so the festival comes around. Um, have they got a drummer? Festival starts. Well, I'll get to that. Okay. The festival starts, and it's their slot. The band comes out. There's four of them. Yeah. Um, one of them's gonna be the monkey, innit? Well, the the usual drummer's not there. Yeah. Um, okay. The usual drummer's not there. Yeah. Uh, I'll just close the story. You know. So the usual drummer's not there. Okay. Um, Can I log off and log this, back on in a bit? This, uh, this, 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 <laughs> this, this drummer comes back out. Yeah. Um, you can't really see who he is. He's not. He, he's got a hood. He's got hoodie on. He's got a hood up. It's not that on. one that played. I can down. feel it coming in the air. <laughs> no, no, no. Who's your no, gonna be no, no, You know this drummer. Yeah. Drummer. He's got his hood up. Cap yeah. On. You can't really see him. He's yeah. Drummer. Yeah. 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 It's the best set they've ever done. Okay. Right. This drummer's amazing. He's going yeah. all over the place. Um. He's really, really good. The band's really, really good. They're loving it. Yeah. Never had a never had a drummer like him. Right, yeah. They've got a 45 minutes set. 30 minutes into it, it starts going a bit... Oh, hang on. Some it's, some it's up. The drummer starts going a bit mad. This fella in the crowd's pulled out an inflatable... Giant inflatable banana. Yeah. This drummer's thrown the sticks, ran off stage and jumped to the crowd and started... You know, there's been a bit of scuffle in the crowd. Yeah. So anyway, that's to cancel the, the set. You know, awful PR. Oh, okay. for it. It, it. It's a nightmare. This drummer's gone mad. Um, over the next few days, bit of rumours on social media that that they had a chimpanzee on drums. Right. Um, they they brushed it off. No, no, it didn't happen. So we got yeah. brushed off. About a week later, mm. there was a chimp spotted in the local zoo near the festival playing drums with twigs and some pots, and he was really good. Mm. So, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's that that wasn't news. <laughs> That was a story. No, the the news is that, and it, and it's pretty much Nothing. almost confirmed that they got the chimpanzee from the local zoo and I got him on drugs. Think we worked that out, <laughs> and then he escaped and got back in the zoo. No, he never escaped. They borrowed him. They borrowed, they borrowed him, him from the zoo. He was, a, he was a drummer chimp from the zoo. Listen, if Dave was here with his drum uh, drum machine yeah. effects, I'd say sounds like champ- chimpanzees eat top. Yeah. But um. Oh. <laughs> I but like he, it, Sam. He's, he's not so unsay. That no. story was like watching a firework that, that wasn't lit properly, that didn't quite take off and sort of fell on the ground and fizzed. Mm. <laughs> That's not my news. A wrong I, cat. That's not my, that, was, that was in a real news article. That. Was it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen, wow. Wow. fair enough. Ned with the monkey news, bringing the monkey news to life. I liked it. I liked it. Well, just on that, before we finish, monkeys, because it's got me. I went to, I was given. One of these gifts by me and my wife have been together forever, right? So you'll know this, Sam. Buying gifts, Christmas and all of that is 
comes more challenging with every passing thing, doesn't oh, yeah. it? Birthday, yeah. whatever, Christmas and all that. So we're looking for new new gifts to get and whatever. So she got me this thing of Go Ape, right? Are you aware of Go Ape? Yeah. You know, yeah. in a forest and all that, climb up and you, you, you do all of the zip lines and different challenges while you're up there. She got me it in 2018. Sorry, 2019. And obviously, COVID happened and it's been put off, put off, put off, put off, right? So we eventually, last week, went. She was like, we've got a week to use it or it's gone. Five years. We've extended it a couple of times because of COVID and all that. Five years to climb a tree. Yeah, right. Took me five years to climb a tree. So we went last week. So I'm not really give it that much thought. I've done... Years ago, when Zach was smaller, we'd done the junior sort of one, which is all right. It's not bad. I'm not great with heights, by the way. I'm I'm really bad with heights. Not not good at all. But I hadn't really given it a second thought because we'd done it. Anyway, we go and we're getting all of the safety stuff, the harness on, like a bit of a harness on. But essentially, you have to do all the stuff yourself, which was something I was unaware of. So you get shown by an instructor. And then they're on the they watch you as you go up. So you you high up, and these ledges that you stand on are about a foot wide, but you're just up a tree. There's no rails, so you. I've done a similar click. thing. It's zip world, very similar. Well, yeah. I've done I've done zip the highest zip world in whatever the one in Wales. Uh, yeah. Me and Ped done that for uh, Everton in the community, which was scary. But you were on and all that. But these are going between huge trees, and you'd have to get up and clip yourself on and clip these two wires on. Go up uncliff keep yourself attached Ooh. put it on a get your carabiner get it on a you know a pulley clip it on there go across whether it was like these high bits of wood you've got to step on or just a rope where you're balancing if you fall you obviously you're not on like a harness but you'd just be suspended do you know what i mean so when yeah. you're scared the heights it's not great so we do the first bit and we get over this this other side and there's there was a special Tarzan swing it's called or the Tarzan line you literally just jump off and you crash into a like a rope climbing thing and you've got to grab on and drag yourself up and it's a huge drop so we were alright till we got to that bit and at that bit I'm thinking what the fuck am I doing like how have you well, it, and my missus come fun. and I'm like why have you got this for me like <laughs> this is terrifying it's like the it's like thinking of the worst present you can get your other half that will terrify them. And she got it. The, but you know what? I did it. And that was station one. There was five stations. And then you went on a zip wire and all that. But two things. One, I was proud because it was to use Amadou Onana's hashtag. It was me versus me. Because essentially it is. It's you overcoming your own sort of fear. What a waste of time. It was, no, it was really good, right? I'll never do it again. Ever, but I've done it. So I got through it, and it was each one of them got higher and higher and higher each station. And by the end, it was shit a fine, pardon my friendship. And there was a huge zip line that you had to just clip yourself on, jump off a tree, and just hope you didn't die. I've done it. But the one thing I come away from is thinking was, how on earth has this been allowed to be a thing? Because they are, <laughs> when you're given the warnings, they say like you people have fell and have been, and you can be fatally injured basically. Because obviously, if you fall off one of these things, your chances are you're dead. I've got right. one word for you. It was terrifying. W- waivers. Yeah, it was waivers. W- waivers. You it wa- was you waivers, wave Sam. your life away, don't you? In fact, even when I take the kids to like all these trampoline parks, you got to sign a waiver. You got to sign a waiver. Yeah. And I've never read any of the waivers, so I don't know what I've signed for. Because you wouldn't do it, would you? You wouldn't no. do it. You know, I don't know what I've signed I, I, for. My missus said sick. to me, I'm oh, I signed the waivers a couple of days ago for you. <laughs> for for me. you. Me missus and me Why lad. So that? obviously you're scared on your own. But I cu- I went first because we had to have someone behind Zach, even though he's 13. But I couldn't watch them doing their bit because it made me worse thinking yeah. if anything happens to them. And if it's you, it's terrifying. But when you're looking at your, your family, it's even worse. So I had to but basically do the course without looking behind me at what was yeah. going on with them. The oh, worst thing about God. those things is if you've got, waiver, yeah. if you've got to sign the waiver, you've got to sign the waiver as the man, and ah. you've got to guess, you, guess your wife's weight, that's a terrible, <laughs> that's a terrible waiver. You my don't want to get into that. You do the waivers, no. love, and I'll just yeah. turn up on the I'll day. I'll turn up, be terrified. I, I, I don't understand 
humans at all. Okay. See, the fact that it's called Go Ape yeah. quite clearly indicates that it's something that monkeys can do or monkeys do. do. Or apes, essentially. Well, <laughs> if, if, if humans are the, are the best thing, you know, the most advanced thing on the planet, why are we trying to do stuff that things that aren't as advanced as trying to uh, can do and it's the only thing they can do really swing from trees and stuff we don't need you that you had them playing the you know, bleeding drums you know, yeah, we, we, ago. We, what we, are you on yeah, about we don't need that we've got you know poems and video editors and stuff we so why don't we just do that and, mm. and because we're really good at why are we trying to do something like that we don't need to do mm. but just because apes do it we'll have a go at that but we'll never be good as apes i'll be thinking um I, what's the why am i doing this I, i'll never be good as a chimpanzee mm. doing this or an ape so I'll just go write a poem. They can't write a poem. Mm. They should make it give it the real ape effect. They should make you dress up as a as a monkey. That like, would be better. Full fair, because it'd be hot. The, but that be would very be hot. interesting. But there's you a reason a why we don't hole, have fur. Yeah, you could have a hole for your bum because the bums are minging, and you could have a hole for your face and yeah. your hands. You'd need. Yeah. But then the photos would look amazing, but they've just you swinging through the trees. That would be interesting. You know what? That would give it an extra edge having to dress up as I, an I, ape. I just think if we needed to swing through trees, we needed fur. We would do, wouldn't we? We'd mm. be chimpanzees, mm. but we don't. Yeah. So why are you going go ape? Uh, like I said, just to f- close the circle, because we're going to finish now, it was a gift. When I got to the end and I survived, the people taking all your harness off and that fella was made up. Ah, oh, brilliant, well done. Did you enjoy it? I was like, mate, enjoyment is not the word I would use for You're that. Happy I've done finished. it. I'm happy it's over. I'm glad I've done it. I will never do it again enjoyment is not the way it's silly to be honest it's like me going lying on a road in florida and going i'll try to be an alligator for a night why'd you lie on a road because they'll be better sort of laying by a swamp that's what alligator well lying by a swamp then delete me won't they because i'm not like what are you doing here you've got beds and stuff why Mm. are you trying this this Mm. is for us so delete me and it's probably what that fella did Mm. when he got eaten i see what you're doing and what what did i say what did i say about him he's an idiot okay let's leave it there let's leave it there another (laughs) sam i know you've got topics so keep them Keep them for when we're a foursome again on Monday. I'll keep, keep, keep your powder dry, Baz. Keep Don't your you powder worry about dry. It. But, but thanks, boys. Li- thanks, thanks for having me again. Say, listen, it was great. And Ned, you, you know, that monkey story. If if you're still listening, well Not done. my story. It was well done if you're still here at the end of that. Because that monkey story <laughs> went on for hours. Um, yeah, big thanks to Sam. Big thanks to Ned. Make sure you like, subscribe, give it a five-star review. And sure, Ped and Mr. Vitty. We'll be back next week with us when Dave Vitti has covered all the grounds that he's visiting. And Ped has got a sharp new haircut. Take it easy. See you all later. Bye.